KHOU 11 News at 10 starts now. Right now at 10, the search for a missing mother and the strange circumstances in the hours before her disappearance. Protests from one end of Texas to the other. Immigration advocates calling for an end to zero tolerance. And President Trump tonight with tough new words for those who illegally cross the border. But first tonight, a look at what happens next for Terry Thompson. A day after a judge declared a mistrial in the chokehold murder. The choke captured on cell phone video in a restaurant parking lot last year. Jurors deliberated for 29 hours but were deadlocked. Will prosecutors retry the case? Stephanie Whitfield looks at their options. The case against Terry Thompson revolves around what happened just over a year ago outside of Denny's in Crosby. Prosecutors claim he murdered 24 year old John Hernandez. The evidence caught on camera. All right, the jury. But after days of trial and 29 hours of jury deliberations, uh, I hereby declare a mistrial. The case is back to square one. Uh, a trial like this, a mistrial, basically means it's as if a trial never happened. KHOU's legal analyst says the ball is now in the district attorney's court. The law requires a decision on how to proceed to be made in a reasonable amount of time. And that will happen after both sides talk to members of the deadlock jury. They took their time um, and they, they did what they can do. And now we have to go back, reassess our position, and then we'll, that'll let us know what we're going to do. A lot of options are on the table. Prosecutors can try the case again, change the charge, or drop the case altogether. The uncertainty, a tough pill to swallow for John Hernandez's grieving family. Why? Because we're Mexican, is that why? and Terry Thompson's defense attorney. It's a frustration that we've put the time in and weren't able to come to some resolution. That's the frustrating part. A dramatic cliffhanger in an already emotionally charged case. Remember, Thompson's wife, a former deputy, is also charged with murder. This mistrial doesn't directly impact her case, but it could have a ripple effect after prosecutors talk to jurors and find out how strong their case really is. Grace, back to you. Stay tuned. Developing right now, family members of a 29 year old mother are holding out hope she will be found. Maria Jimenez Rodriguez was last seen Thursday morning, dropping her daughter off at a babysitter. Her car was found near Wallaceville and Wayside. Family members say she is employed, responsible, and takes care of her little girl. Texas EquiSearch officials will continue searching tomorrow. Earlier today, they admitted there are still a lot of unknowns. She certainly is endangered missing. Now, we, we don't have any evidence of foul play, but we certainly don't have any evidence that she left on her own. Here's another look at Maria Jimenez Rodriguez, five foot three, brown hair, brown eyes with distinct moles on her face. Call police if you see her. Tonight, the woman accused of driving this car the wrong way on I-45 is facing much more serious charges. The man who was hit has now died. The crash happened in the early morning hours of June 2nd on the Pierce Elevated. 28-year-old Nicole Bertoldi is now facing a charge of intoxication manslaughter for killing Billy Allen. He died two weeks after the crash in details just emerging today. Bertoldi's court appearance is set for next month. No courts, no judges. Trending tonight, President Donald Trump says he would prefer deporting illegal immigrants in a way that would avoid the current legal process. Here's a tweet from the commander in chief today. Quote, when somebody comes in, we must immediately, with no judges or court cases, bring them back from where they came. Our system is a mockery to good immigration policy and law and order. The president later said immigration must be merit based. U.S. immigration law provides certain rights for undocumented immigrants who are arrested by federal authorities. In most cases, they're allowed a full hearing with an immigration judge before being deported. So we, want you. So we, want you. we thank God tonight for the people of Houston saying we will not be silent. From West Texas to Houston, immigration protests statewide tonight as more than 2,000 immigrant children remain in custody, separated from their parents. That's according to the latest numbers from Homeland Security. It's not known just how long the reunification process will take. 
Attorneys tell us perhaps weeks. Here in Houston, advocates rallied all day across Houston to keep immigrant families together and stop a proposed children's shelter from opening its doors. Marcelino Benito is live with that story. Marcelino. Grace, the president's executive order has not stopped the protest here in Houston. Tonight's protest taking place at a well-known Houston church. Let those children go back with their parents. At Community of Faith Church on Houston's north side, the message could not be clear. One family, one future. And the fact is, while a portion of the family is suffering, then all of us are suffering. We can't be at ease while others in that kind of severe pain. Bishop James Dixon helped organize tonight's vigil. He wanted to host an event in the black community to show its support for immigrant families and children separated at the border. We're talking about children who are being treated as criminals. They're, they're in cages. Local leaders spoke out against the Trump administration's immigration policy. The American people are tired of the bickering and want a resolution to this and do it humanely. Earlier in the day in downtown Houston, protesters marched yet again, sounding off against turning this warehouse into a detention center for immigrant children. Families brought their own little ones. They say it's personal. Well, I think that I get to come home to my family, and I just imagine just like the feeling of a pit in my stomach, not being able to come home and like hug my two girls and my son. As darkness fell outside Bishop Dixon's church, the outspoken pastor told the crowd what's happening is immoral, calling all Houstonians to leave political party aside and pray that all families are soon reunited. God's order is for family to be together. Children belong with their parents. That's the order of God. And anyone seeking to possess otherwise is really out of order. We all, I think most Americans understand that. Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez also taking part in protests today. He was in West Texas at Tornillo, right outside of El Paso, the site of a tent city now being used to house immigrant children. Advocates and immigrant activists there say they want proof that families are indeed being reunited. We're live on the north side tonight. I'm Marcelino Benito, KHOU 11 News. Thanks, Marcelino. And developing tonight, Republican Congressman Michael McCall of Tomball gets the president's support to put a consensus immigration bill up for votes in the House. In addition to securing $25 billion for a border wall, it also ends family separation. The president's executive order only ends it for 20 days. The bill would include requirements that employers check the legal status of their workers. And a big note here, the bill would provide a pathway to citizenship for dreamers. The bill is supposed to go for a vote sometime I this week. To the White House yesterday. We're on top of any new developments on the border debate. Get updates around the clock on the free KHOU 11 news app. A live look now at the Houston skyline. Meteorologist Blake Matthews is here. And Blake, it looks like we're settling in for a sizzling stretch of days. Yes, and this is what I call summertime in Houston. It's not going to get any better for at least three months. You know how it rolls around here. Hey, you know what? We saw a few scattered showers earlier this afternoon. Most of them have since fizzled away. We're still tracking a few of them out along the uh, Texas-Louisiana line there, just to the south of Port Arthur and Sabine Pass. Should be a dry evening here, but a hot afternoon it was. 94 degrees was our high temperature for today. That's two degrees above our high temperature for this time of year. Temperatures have cooled down into the 80s as we wake up tomorrow morning. We'll be in the upper 70s. Tomorrow will be a rinse repeat kind of day. Your full forecast is going to be minutes away. All right. Thank you.